everyone to this webinar on techniques to excel in photography a very warm welcome to our resource person today ms neeta shankar we are very glad and honored to have you here ma'am thanks for having consented to interact via this webinar it's me dr ramya k prasad chairperson and assistant professor from the department of visual communication amrita vishwavidyalaya peetam mysore amrita mysore is one of the seven campuses guided and blessed by its chancellor sadguru shri mata amritanandamayi devi popularly known as amma recently this deemed to be university is ranked number 4 among all universities in india by the nirf conducted by mhrd government of india the mysore campus provides great ambience for learning combining the state of art facilities with its serene ashram and temple atmosphere The department is one that stands out for more reasons than one, offering programs such as B.Sc. Visual Media, five-year integrated visual communication, post-graduation programs in M.Sc. Visual Communication and M.A. Visual Media and Communication, and many more. We in the department aim to produce not only responsible persons but also desire to sensitize citizens to social concerns, thereby creating a bigger mind space for the people of the global village. with specialization courses such as event management ad photography graphic designing public relations online journalism documentary and short film making film studies and so on are all part of the curriculum that offers much sought after career to many students right let's get to the business straight one click and that photograph is powerful enough not only to remind us of an event or a detail but can bring back all the feelings and the sounds of that particular moment the ceremonies of a birth or a birthday marriages and anniversaries holidays uh, new houses and all the all, all recorded events because all of it are very important landmarks in our life photographs are our personal story a lifeline of our lives filled with faces places all that we love they are our story that which we love to share with the others hundreds of images come together to form a narrative of our lives they are all actually small pieces of like a jigsaw puzzle that will completely give a bigger picture of our lives photograph speaks the best to the most generous part of our human nature the desire to share what we find beautiful and interesting to that of the others millions of people sharing their personal passionate sometimes quirky take on the world around them photographs always allows us to express through an art form okay we notice a beautiful landscape or an old man lined face 
or whatever we want to capture. Each of us will have a different reason to do so, especially when we want to create something. It not only feels good, but it feels great when the number of hits scores high up to the sky. Our images can express joy and sorrow, wonder and sympathy. Every human creation, emotion, can find a place in photography. Pictures can grab attention and speak directly to our emotions. Photography, at its best, is a powerful language which speaks to our emotions. It allows us to tell a story and shows us our framing of the world around us. No photographer settles that this is the best shot that he has ever got. Every second chance he wants to explore. From an SLR to DSLR, point and shoot to a mobile, be it an iPhone or a OnePlus, be it zoom lens to tele or wide, be it a 64 or a, a 48 megapixel camera, I'm sure you too would do that. Then why wait? Ah, 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 wait. Before you do that, uh, let's listen to Ms. Nita Shankar. Okay? And so what is important is what you see and how you see it through the lens, says Ms. Nita Shankar, who is a wedding and a lifestyle photographer. In fact, she is uh, the Godex India official brand ambassador, who is also proficient with Nikon. And she's one among the top 20 women photographers in India, as featured on the web. With almost a decade's exposure, Ms. Nita is out to explore more with her lens and frames. Through this webinar, she would throw light on careers with photography, besides sharing tips on how to capture these images with DSLR. Wishing more prospects to Nita Shankar Photography Private Limited, that's her company, I invite her to address us. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Dr. Ramya. Uh, hello, everyone. It's a great feeling to be here and to address all of you. OK, so uh, let me get started. Shall I share my presentation? Yes. Are you able to see my presentation? Yes, ma'am. OK, great. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, it's a wonderful feeling to be here to address all of you young students uh, who want to get into photography. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, it's a pleasure to be a part of this webinar. OK, so. Uh, uh, Ma'am already introduced me, uh, but I'll just quickly introduce myself and uh, talk about my journey and uh, how I built my career in photography. So uh, through this webinar, I'm hoping to inspire a lot of you to take up photography as a profession and, uh, you know, to uh, explore different career options that are possible in this field. OK, so a little about myself. I'm uh, Neeta Shankar. I'm a wedding and lifestyle photographer from Bangalore. Uh, I've been doing photography uh, like uh, how uh, Ma'am mentioned. I've been doing photography for almost a decade now uh, because it was in 2010 that I actually picked up a camera. And uh, since then, I've been, uh, you know, uh, re uh, really passionate about photography. And uh, yeah, so. Since 2000, end of 2012 is when I decided to shift into photography full time. So I took it up as a career and I've been doing uh, photography, wedding photography in particular since then. So in these last seven and a half, eight years, I've shot over 250 weddings uh, all across India. Uh, so all kinds of weddings and uh, mostly uh, uh, a lot of weddings in South India because that's the uh, John, uh, that's the kind of weddings that I actually enjoy shooting. And uh, yes, so other than weddings, we do a lot of uh, lifestyle photography. I really enjoy taking portraits and I also love traveling. So I do a lot of travel photography as well. And yeah, so I'm one of the brand ambassadors for Godox India. I'm also uh, a Nikon mentor, photography mentor. So 
let me go ahead uh, with the slide. Okay, so these are the links to my work. So in case uh, uh, you would like to follow, uh, uh, that's my website, Facebook, Instagram. Do stay in touch and uh, it would be nice to connect with you all. Okay, so before I get started, I just wanted to, you know, actually tell you guys about uh, how I got started in photography, because this is one of the most common questions I get. Uh, so I am an engineer. I uh, studied engineering from Mysore. Uh, I studied in SJC Mysore. And uh, once I joined work, I just picked up a camera because I was uh, uh, had started to travel a lot because uh, that was, uh, you know, uh, something that I always, you know, dreamt of doing. Uh, so as soon as I got into a job, I started traveling and uh, so I picked up a camera just to document these travels of mine. So when I picked up the camera, I never even in my wildest of dreams thought that I would switch my career to become a travel photographer or a wedding photographer. I always, uh, I always thought that I was meant to be an engineer. <laughs> so, uh, and engineering was something that I really liked as well. Uh, it is, uh, it's not like I didn't like engineering, so I wanted a different career option. Uh, I actually like being an engineer, and that was always my dream profession. Uh, but it so happened that, uh, you know, once I picked up the camera and I started, you know, I uh, got interested in photography. Uh, I just felt that this is the right, uh, you know, uh, career path when I had to choose between the two. So uh, this image here is one uh, is one of the images I took way back in 2010 when I just picked up the camera and I had made my trip to Ladakh. Uh, so uh, like I said, because I wanted to document all my travel is where I picked up the camera. And this is for, uh, uh, from that trip. I don't have many images from that trip because uh, I've lost uh, you know, most of the images. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is one uh, favorite image of mine. And uh, I think it was during that trip that I discovered my interest in uh, photography. Uh, strangely, before that, I had not even taken a picture. Uh, uh, as in before I picked up my own camera in 2010, I had not even, uh, not ever taken a picture because, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, uh, kids while growing up, uh, my interests were different and plus you know then we used to have film cameras and you know rolls of films were expensive and uh, photography then was kind of reserved for like special occasions and uh, travel and stuff so if, uh, generally kids wouldn't really you know uh, play with cameras or you know uh, get a uh, get a chance to explore photography as a hobby uh, but that way, these days with the cameras going digital, uh, all uh, youngsters and, you know, uh, even kids have a lot of opportunities to explore in the field of photography because uh, it's no longer a very expensive uh, hobby to have. Yeah, so, so that's how my journey in photography got started. These are some of the images I've made over a few uh, you know, trips to Ladakh and uh, a few more, uh, you know, a few more places across the world. Uh, so these are all, uh, you know, I've just put together a bunch of images right from 2010 to all the way till now. Uh, there is uh, like a mixture of images. So I just wanted to like, you know, take you through the journey, like how it happened uh, uh, for me. So once I got started with photography, uh, I always thought I'd be a travel photographer because uh, that's you know, traveling was my passion and capturing those uh, beautiful uh, sceneries was what really got me into photography. But it so happened that I took a lot of portraits as well during these travels because I found, uh, you know, uh, I actually found uh, uh, all these people interesting and I wanted to, you know, capture uh, beautiful images of uh, people everywhere and I uh, ended up taking you know beautiful portraits like these uh, and once I started posting these on my social networks like on Facebook and uh, people started asking me saying uh, would you uh, be able to capture my wedding and things like that so this was like in 2010-2011 so that's how I actually got into wedding photography because uh, everyone saw these portraits that are taken in different places and uh, they asked me to, you know, start capturing their weddings. 
So it started with one of my classmates wedding uh, way back in like uh, 2011. And since then, uh, and after that, I started getting inquiries uh, from all uh, places and because I started posting those wedding photographs online and things like that. So my whole business uh, got started because of, uh, you know, posting a few pictures that I taken uh, online. So, yeah, so that's how I got into wedding photography. But of course, I always thought that I'll be a travel photographer. So I continued doing a lot of travel photography. I, even today, I do a lot of travel photography. So uh, you can see like uh, some of these are, are uh, from various travels. This is from Humpy. Uh, this is from Singapore. Again, Singapore. These are all uh, pretty old images. This is from Spiti Valley in India. Again, Spiti Valley. The, uh, this one is uh, from my most recent travel. This is uh, from UK. Uh, so generally when i do travel photography i love to explore uh, you know different places and try out different techniques and uh, i like to you know uh, show the place uh, you know, show capture the real beauty of the place and yeah so some of these are uh, from more recent travels this is one of my favorite photographs uh, this is a place uh, called this is a place in UK, uh, so it's uh, close to London. Hello. I think someone is on. Uh, Hello. Hello. May I request all of you to please mute your audio? Hello. Excuse me. Please mute your audio. Okay, a humble request to all the participants. In case your line gets cut and when you're rejoining again, please ensure that both your video and audio are off. You can join the meeting with your video and audio off. All right. Please, it disrupts the flow of the session. Kindly avoid keeping your audio on. Sorry, ma'am. We can continue. Yeah, so uh, this was uh, one, of the, uh, one of my... Uh, recent this is one of my recent favorite photographs uh, because I think uh, surely because of the amount of effort it took to get to this place uh, so uh, this is a place uh, some uh, in UK very close to London so by the time we actually got to this spot I wanted to you know shoot this uh, spot uh, so it, it was uh, I had to actually climb up a hill and then climb down to like get to this spot and by the time we actually got here it was like really late and uh, all, I mean almost sundown but uh, yeah so we tried some long exposures just before we had to like leave uh, but yeah the sheer effort it took to get to this place and then finally to see a uh, photograph uh, you know uh, a quick photograph but that uh, really captured the beauty of the place is, uh, you know, what makes this photograph my favorite, uh, one of my recent favorite. Okay, more pictures from uh, my travels. This is, uh, again, another really uh, favorite picture of mine from Scotland, uh, again, from my travel last year. Again, more pictures of Scotland. This was a picture I took somewhere, I think, in 2017 when I made a trip to Spiti Valley. Uh, so you can see, uh, you know, we uh, when we were like moving in the vehicle, this was taken from a moving vehicle, but I am happy that we got like a, uh, you know, I got like a good shot of the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, statue against the uh, sky. And at that point of time, it was, it had just started raining uh, over there just behind the statue so you can see the uh, you know the clouds break into rain and that adds like a really beautiful backdrop to these photographs okay so other than these other than uh, uh, travel for, uh, photography I do a lot of photography for myself as well uh, like this is uh, a picture of my husband so I capture a lot of personal memories and uh, that's how photography should be it should be a, it should be about 
capturing moments for yourself it should be about capturing moments uh, for those who are important for you so that's what uh, yeah so that's what we were uh, you know that's what i concentrate on you know other than travel photography or wedding photography or all our projects so that's what i spend a lot of time uh, shooting sorry yeah so this is my dog uh, i shoot a lot of pictures of him in if in fact you if you uh, you know look at my our cameras and our phones uh, we have way more pictures of him than we have shot at weddings so photography like how ma'am was mentioning photography uh, is kind of like uh, you know a very personal thing as well uh, you actually capture memories that you want to cherish for your entire lifetime and uh, it helps you capture these memories which uh, can never again you know you can never really go back in time but you can actually by looking at these photographs you can clearly distinctly remember what it feels like uh, you know what it felt like at that time or, or you know what the scene looked like and uh, things like that so it photography is something that can be so much more than just a profession or uh, just a hobby it is kind of like a way of life for me because uh, i don't think i can go anywhere without a camera i don't think i can do uh, you know uh, i can ever travel without a camera or i can ever even step out of my house without a camera because uh, i would love to you know i love to capture uh, my life in uh, these various photographs uh, so here is another uh, photograph of my husband it was shot in goa and uh, look at what a beautiful sunset it is i don't think i have ever seen a sunset which is as beautiful as that after that but uh, you know uh, by capturing this moment uh, i have actually you know captured it for eternity and i can always look back at this uh, picture and know you know or uh, feel what i felt that day uh, how you know beautiful the colors were how you know uh, quiet the beach was uh, you know you are you can actually bring back all those feelings that you had at that time uh, by looking at a photograph so that is why photography is important to me uh, photography uh, uh, is not just a hobby or a profession it's actually much more than that yeah so that's uh, so i already mentioned about how i got started into photography so uh, and i also mentioned about how i started shooting weddings in 2000 uh, end of 2011 and then uh, uh, i got so many inquiries for weddings during that year uh, during 2011 2012 that there came a point in my life when i had to like make a decision uh, as to which career i wanted to you know take it up because it becomes difficult to focus on multiple things and i wanted to do uh, justice to one particular career so uh, it was actually a hard decision to uh, you know make a switch from uh, you know being an engineer to being a photographer because uh, in being an engineer is also something i really like and that was the job that actually gave me the financial freedom it gave me uh, a lot of uh, it it uh, gave me a lot of exposure into the real world so i still cherish the job that i had but it was time for me to you know make a decision as to you know uh, which field i wanted to progress in so i uh after a lot of thinking i decided that i would take up photography full time so in 2000 end of 2012 is when i did that i uh, on my birthday on november 6 i uh, put down my papers and i uh, you know made my decision that this is what i would do so i and since then i have not really looked back and thought you know why did i change my profession or uh, is this the right thing for me so i think uh, it was one of the best decisions that i took at that point of time so these are some of the travel uh, sorry uh, some of the wedding images that uh, i've shot over the years uh, so when it comes to weddings for me it's wedding photography is important because these are once in a lifetime moments uh, for anyone they uh, you cannot really you know ask them to redo something it's all you know it all, uh, all happens uh, <clears throat> once in a lifetime and you cannot get to relive these moments you know we in future so it's better to you know it's always important to capture these uh, you know as many good memories as possible from that day so 
these are some of the photographs from the some of the earlier weddings that I've shot. Uh, I love this photograph for kind of the perspective, uh, you know, which shows the context of where the wedding happened. It happened in a church, uh, so it gives a lot of context. And uh, the, uh, it also, you know, depicts a simple moment. Most of my pictures are pretty simple. I don't like to complicate my frames. I don't like to, uh, you know, add more than uh, you know uh, what is required into my frame so i believe when it comes to photography it's all about composition uh, so the way you compose your images the way you uh, you know uh, choose uh, the background the way you uh, place your uh, different elements in your frame such that it all brings in some sort of context or story and it all uh, you know uh, uh, shows a kind of a different perspective than what people are used to I am a very visual person, so I uh, always look for frames that, uh, you know, uh, the back backgrounds that actually, you know, add to the story. I also, uh, when I'm shooting uh, weddings, I mostly use a wide angle lens. Uh, so that's why you see all generally a, a really wide shots. I don't really prefer taking really close ups of people because uh, when it comes to wedding photography, a lot of people think that it's all about, you know, getting close up portraits of people, but that is not all wedding photography is about. It should show the place where uh, the wedding took place. It should show, uh, you know, what the scene was like. It should uh, show, you know, what the couple felt like at that point of time, uh, how, you know, how, uh, uh, the kind of light that was there uh, and it should also, you know, show how the uh, entire family felt at that time because wedding photography is not just about the fam uh, about the couple, it's also about the family. I'll show you some pictures where we've, you know, shot with the family as well. Okay, so I uh, also believe that when you're shooting weddings or whenever you, uh, when you're trying to take photography as a career, you should focus on the technique as well. It's extremely important that you know your technique and you don't just shoot in auto mode because uh, people do believe that, you know, photography is very simple and then, you know, you can just use uh, a good camera and the camera will do all your job for you. But that is not what a photographer uh, I mean, a professional photographer relies on. Uh, a professional photographer can shoot with any kind of equipment and make really good images because he knows the technique. So, uh, yeah, one such image where, uh, which has been really popular uh, on my feed because uh, of the technique used. Uh, so we here we've captured the couple really, you know, uh, uh, frozen in time. Uh, this is a single image, although most people ask me if it's a composite. Uh, it's a single image where the motion of the vehicles has been captured because of a slow shutter speed, uh, but the couple is frozen in time. So if you know your technique, you can actually create a lot of interesting pictures from no matter where you are. Uh, most often photographers always, uh, you know, uh, new photographers, amateur photographers always uh, you know, complain about lack of opportunities or lack of beautiful places to shoot. Uh, so uh, even uh, uh, photographers who are new into weddings always, uh, you know, uh, think that others are making good images only because they're getting to shoot in huge palaces or something like that. Uh, actually, it's not really true. If you know how to, you know, work around with your equipment and if you know how to use light, you will always be able to make uh, really good images. So like how I mentioned, composition is extremely important in wedding photography and so is the technique to, uh, you know, all the uh, techniques, uh, all the fundamentals of photography. Uh, the, it's also important to learn lighting. Uh, so you'll see in most of my images, I use external light and uh, I think that is what photographers, young photographers should focus on because getting the uh, nice light in your image makes your, Im elevates your image to, uh, from like a good image to a great image. Again, this photograph is about the technique of long exposure combined with flash, uh, you know, where you see the motion of the uh, waves, you see the motion of the, you know, uh, light painting that's been done, but at the same time, 
you have a subject that is frozen in time so this uh this is not really a very very uh, you know very easy technique to implement because you need to have a shutter speed that is long enough for like uh, uh for the clouds to move for the you know waves to smoothen out and for the you know light painting to happen but you need to also have, have a light source that is really powerful enough to freeze your subject in time so this photograph is also about technique i love experimenting with double exposures because i think uh, you know it uh, creates a lot of uh, interesting abstract frames uh, so this is one such favorite double exposure of mine and like i was talking about uh, it's really important to learn lighting because that is what sets even simple images uh, apart from the rest so i uh, like i mentioned i'm uh, i'm a mentor for godox india so they make uh, beautiful lighting equipment uh, for photographers so this uh, so most of my images almost every image of mine uses some sort of uh, external light or the other i love capturing uh, images uh you know showing the beauty of the place you know where the wedding is taking place or and also uh, not just the beauty of the place but also you know how beautiful the day started so i usually we usually start really early in weddings so it's always uh, you know a really uh, you know challenging uh, situation to be able to you know uh, get the kind of frames that you have visualized but this is one such wedding where we managed to you know get the bride on uh, get uh, get to shoot the bride on time uh, for the sunrise and we got some beautiful images in front of the sunrise and this is something i'm sure the couple will cherish uh, throughout their lives to remember what that beautiful morning looked like on their weddings like i mentioned if you know uh, your technique you can uh, you know work with any sort of a situation uh, like for example in this scene uh, th these are all basically uh, you know little bulbs that were hanging in a, a place so although the place was really pretty because of all these bulbs what uh, uh, i've tried to do over here is to like completely you know kill the background uh, ambient light to you know draw attention to the lights of the bulbs and the couple alone why i did this is uh, you know although the place uh, did look a little pretty but this was captured to the end towards the end of the shoot and you know how uh, you know uh, by the end of a wedding shoot most often you know the place the decor and everything doesn't remain intact uh, there are already people like you know getting uh, uh you know changing uh, or uh, the decor or you know removing the decor and things like that so this was shot towards the end of the shoot where you know the decor was all messy and it was not a great scene to shoot at so uh, although i'd wanted to make a picture at this place uh, way earlier i hadn't got the chance and so finally when i had to shoot this i wanted to i kind of visualized a scene where uh, we you know uh, we killed the ambient light completely and just lit the couple with a flash and just use the lights of the bulb as uh, you know to create that interesting bokeh so my point here is that if you know how to shoot if you know your technique then you will be able to you know make images uh, in any situation in any place and uh, you know still make beautiful images again i love shooting during sunrise and sunset so this is one such uh, picture in hampi shot in hampi say this picture would not have been possible if i had not uh, you know known how to use flash so or external lighting so this is one of the reasons that i tell people that when they are learning photography lighting is one of the first things they should focus on uh, if you you know take this picture without external light then what will happen is that the camera uh, will either be able to get the exposure right for the sky or it will be able to get the exposure right for the couple in front so if you need the beautiful colors of the sky and the couple lit in the same image then you need to have a uh, you need to be proficient with lighting 
again uh, another image where uh, i have tried to you know uh, darken the background uh, this is because most of the places that we shoot in are not always clean and perfect and uh, uh, it may have a lot of clutter it may have a lot of unwanted elements in the frame uh, like i mentioned when i was talking about composition it's extremely important to ensure that your uh, photograph have only those elements that are important to your image and everything else that is a distraction should be eliminated from the frame sometimes it's physically impossible to eliminate distractions so uh, at that time i use lighting to uh, highlight the uh, you know subject and add shadow everywhere else this is uh, one of the, uh, this is a bridal portrait from one of the uh, more recent uh, weddings that i shot uh, before the lockdown uh, so here again i've used the light to you know uh, highlight uh, the bride and i've shot this from outside her room you know with a, uh, through a small uh, crack in the door uh, to get that you know frame so this image is uh again from one of the recent weddings uh, where we uh, where i was trying to photograph the couple's engagement rings uh i like this image because uh you know uh it's uh it's because of the way the light is used and the way uh this uh whole image came together by just placing it onto some onto like a uh backdrop of a tablecloth that was there in one of the tables uh, of one of the guest tables there so when i saw this uh, uh this kind of like a sequined backdrop i uh, had decided way early in that wedding that i would like to make a picture uh, using that so i had uh, kind of like visualized you know what the frame should look like uh, way earlier than i took the photograph so uh it's extremely important to have a vision to be able to visualize even before you can you know make the picture to be able to visualize what the picture should look like uh if you have this kind of a vision where you can uh, where you can clearly identify what your uh, picture is going to look like then you will be able to achieve a lot of interesting frames so obviously when you look at the scene uh, if you had uh, seen the you know rings placed on the table right then there you wouldn't have imagined the kind of uh, you know uh, beautiful bokeh that it would have created right like everyone would not have just seen that and seen uh, it this way uh, so uh, my point is that when it comes to uh, photography you should always try and show uh, people something that is not directly visible to their uh, naked eye uh, it shouldn't be you know uh, although i do shoot a lot of uh, scenes uh, you know the way i see it uh, you know the way it is uh, like i do shoot a lot of simple frames which uh, just tells the story of the day but it's also important to know your technique to, to be able to create uh, images which are not very obvious to the naked eye so it creates something that is unique again this is one such image where uh, this was like a brightly lit hall uh, where the reception happened and i wanted to you know when i'd seen these uh, you know uh, lights on the ceiling and or uh, these uh, kind of like these square uh, 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 frames that they had in lights i uh, had kind of visualized an image in my head uh, really early so that i would execute it at the end of the reception so you can see you can still see all the chairs placed there and all the guests guests have left to have dinner uh, so just before the couple were about to have their dinner i just made them climb onto a dining table just to you know get this image that i had visualized in my head so here again what i've tried to do is you know try to get those interesting structures uh, interesting uh, structure of the room as well as the lighting uh, and added some lights of my own to create that uh you know nice silhouette of the couple and uh, you know by using an, an ultra wide angle lens i've tried to exaggerate the whole uh, you know frame i uh, like i was mentioning uh, i believe photography is all about lighting 
uh, uh, composition technique and it's also about the moment because uh, if you have great composition in your image if you have a beautiful uh, light in your image uh, but you have you don't have a great moment then it doesn't make a great photograph so oh, when it comes to photography when it comes to photography it should be about uh, composition lighting and moment it should be a combination of all three uh, like for example in this uh, shot uh, according to me this shot is all about the lighting because if i had just shot this in like normal uh, ambient light uh, you can see this image was shot in daylight uh, but i've chosen to you know make it look like uh, no i've chosen to make it look like dusk uh, but it was actually shot at around like 4 o'clock in the evening so all this was achieved because of lighting uh, and if i had shot this in like just ambient natural light i don't think this image would have made as big an impact as it is doing now so here's another such image uh, you know which i uh, again looks amazing because of the way the photograph is lit most often light uh, photographs are a combination of multiple lights and it's all about knowing from which angle you should light your subject and uh, what should be the intensity of different lights and how many different lights you need to shoot a photograph of a subject like for example in this photograph uh, i've used like three lights uh, one to light the subject and another to fill in all the shadows created from the first light and the third light to highlight her hair Uh, so you can see i uh, you know there is like a golden highlight on her hair so that is caused by the third light again similar technique but uh, you won't believe that these photographs were actually shot in a uh, in a cafe and it was uh, although it was a beautiful cafe it was a very modern themed cafe so uh, when we went there uh, you know uh, we uh, when we uh, were to do this shoot we did this shoot for a uh, lehenga brand so when we went there to shoot we had a completely different idea in mind and then uh, we saw the location all the location was pretty sometimes you know the location just may not go with the kind of uh, you know subject that you have or the kind of theme that you have so at such times you have to like you know uh, kind of rework the whole strategy and you know come up with uh, kind of images even uh, just by you know implementing different lighting techniques so in both these images you don't see the modern decor of the uh, cafe at all because we uh, you know ensured that all you see is like very little of the background and the focus is all on the subject by ensuring uh, good light okay so i was talking about moment a uh, while ago so uh, i was saying that it's extremely important to capture moments and being a wedding photographer this uh, becomes more important because these moments cannot be repeated uh, so like uh, one such example is this uh, picture i really like this picture uh, so the bride uh, arrived uh, at the church where, where she was getting married and father of the bride who you see in the reflection was standing there uh, eagerly waiting for his daughter to come so that he can walk her down the aisle so it was just a brief glance you know as soon as the bride came and the father saw his beautiful daughter he had this smile on his face and the daughter looked uh, you know extremely happy and looked her uh, by seeing her dad so it was just a brief moment uh, of that connection between the bride and her father and i'm lucky i got to uh, capture this moment because uh, i saw that the father's reflection was falling on the uh, on the uh, on the window so i tried to you know make a uh, kind of like a uh, i mean you cannot call it a double exposure but because it's a single exposure but uh, i tried to you know kind of get the uh, reflection of the father into the same frame uh, so that it uh, you know adds a different Uh, i mean it adds a lot more context to this uh, scene so the only other way i could have shot this was if i had taken a really wide shot where the bride was inside the car and uh, the father was uh, standing in front of the car uh, but uh, 
in that case it wouldn't have shown you know the uh, expression on the bride's face or the expression on the father's face so like i said you need to be able to know your technique you need to be able to think on your feet because wedding photography is a really challenging field uh, it's not uh, you know just like it's not like landscapes or uh, you know portraits where you have time to think and execute your frames it all happens in a fraction of a second and you should be able to capture these moments for uh, you know the couple and their families i'm sure this image is one of the bride's favorites because uh, it's not just uh, like i mentioned earlier it's not just about the couple when you're shooting a wedding it's also about the entire family it's also about their relationships with their parents their relationships with uh, their grandparents and everyone around this is another uh, you know beautiful moment uh, from a wedding i shot last year uh, where you know or oh, just for a you know fraction of a second the bride's face just lit up completely you know as soon as the groom was about to tie the mangal sutra so uh i shot this image from this angle like lifting my camera way over his shoulder because i wanted to add context that uh it was him that she was looking at uh when i saw her looking at him uh, with so much love and happiness i just wanted to you know get him also into the frame so i just moved behind him and you know try to take this picture over his shoulder so that you can see where she is looking at and you can see you know what brings that joy to her face so it's extremely important in any sort of photography to be able to show context or story where uh, if i had just taken a close up of this bride uh, you know just her face then it wouldn't have shown the context that uh, she's looking at the groom and she's happy because of that so it's extremely important in uh, photography to be able to you know capture context i like this picture because it's really simple it's uh, really warm it's uh, all about the moment there is uh, it's all about the moment and composition nothing else and of course beautiful light earlier i had mentioned that you know weddings are not just about the couple it's also about the families this was one wedding uh, i think one of the few weddings i shot in mysore uh, so yeah you can see how beautiful this image looks because of the expressions of all the family members and how happy they are you know in this image the couple is not even seen properly but uh, they are just uh, i mean they are adding context and they are adding the story but it's all about the family members so uh, i love capturing moments like these uh, which shows the interaction between the family it shows the family dynamics it shows how uh, you know the it shows it tells us the story about their relationship and their uh, uh, how happy and uh, oh, beautiful this moment was and sometimes you know there are some uh, emotional moments a lot of times there are a lot of emotional moments in weddings and those have to be captured perfectly as well so i was taking a picture of a garland exchange uh, between the couple uh, and immediately after the garland exchange i saw a uh, bride's mom just standing behind her looking at her really emotionally and it was just again a fraction fraction of a second you know when that expression uh, you know passed her face so it's really important you know to capture these moments uh, although her face is not completely seen the uh, i think that is what makes this picture so uh, unique because you see her expression you see her eyes and her eyes tell the complete story of what she felt like at that moment i'm sure if the bride or her mom sees this picture even now after many years of their wedding uh, of her wedding uh, she would still uh, both mom and daughter would still remember what that moment felt felt like so the this is why wedding photography is extremely challenging because it's very easy to miss simple moments like this uh, because it's not obvious in the face kind of moments it has to be uh, you have to always uh, have a you know eye out for like little moments like this because this is what makes uh, for strong wedding photography again another uh, simple moment with a father of the bride and uh, the bride 
and of course there is like a lot of happy moments a lot of fun moments as well so it's important to capture all kinds of emotions in weddings again another happy moment okay so that's pretty much the content i had for today uh, so we talked about composition we talked about how technique is important in your images and how you should know different techniques we also talked about uh how lighting is extremely important and it's essential to learn artificial light uh because you can't always rely on natural light and we also talked about how moment is probably the most important in your, uh, among all the elements in your photograph so ensure you capture those beautiful moments uh, whether it's for yourself or, or for your families or you capturing it as a profession ensure you capture all those beautiful moments and uh, you know make sure that people love your photographs and uh, make sure that you are enjoying the uh, enjoying the uh, enjoying photography whether it's as a hobby or a profession so i was talking about uh, yeah so uh, i do have a lot of uh photography related uh tutorials and stuff on my youtube channel uh you can go to youtube.com/nitashankar and uh, i do plan to keep uploading a lot of tutorials and stuff in case you long and ask them to you know light the uh scene from off the camera so this is called off camera lighting where we don't have the flash like on our camera we always have uh it off the camera so we usually take along an assistant to help us with uh holding the light in different angles Okay, uh, ma'am. There's another participant who is asking: Do you visit the site before the wedding, or uh, those spots before you plan your shoot? Yes. Uh, if I get a chance, uh, if it is in the same city, uh, we do visit. Uh, and most of the wedding venues in Bangalore, we've already been there because uh, we've shot a lot of weddings in Bangalore. So, uh, like that, we would uh, uh, most likely have. you know visited it at some point or we always make sure to visit it beforehand so that we get an idea of like what the light looks like what at different times of the day uh, you know what the place looks like and what are the different places where we can make good photos and things like that uh, so but of course if you're shooting a wedding in some other city or something it's always uh, difficult to do that so we look up pictures online to get an idea uh, and sense of the place and we also try and go at least one day before so that we can you know check out the place uh, beforehand if nothing is possible at least like a you know an hour before the event starts so that we get a sense of the place okay uh ma'am there's another participant who says he likes all your frames and compositions that you have uh, currently displayed he says do you think being a freelance wedding photographer uh, especially during this pandemic situation is it a good option do you think uh, you know how do you manage shooting during the current situation uh, honestly i have not taken up any weddings after the situation started so yes uh, right now the kind of situation we have is totally unprecedented and none of us expected it to happen this way uh, we had a lot of weddings that we were booked for since march and all of them have been either cancelled or postponed to next year so yeah this has been a totally different uh, you know uh, kind of a situation uh, we've been mostly busy with like product shoots in our studio so we are only taking up shoots where we can shoot in our studio itself and not go out uh, but yeah i know a couple of friends of mine who are going out and shooting even in the lockdown and they're trying to uh, you know uh, uh, keep a steady flow of income uh, throughout uh, by taking up a lot of weddings as well uh, as long as you are safe and you are ensuring that you are you know protecting yourself i think that should be fine uh, but yes i haven't actually taken up any wedding so far so i'm uh, hoping the situation will resolve soon and i'll get back to shooting weddings but i think the last wedding i shot was in uh, just before the lockdown in march mid i shot a wedding and after that i haven't okay okay uh, ma'am what is your take on composed frames versus realistic frames which one would you prefer so my style is kind of like a combination of both uh, when i'm shooting portraits i compose my images uh, you know as in i uh, you know 
make more uh, kind of different as in composed images where i kind of imagine and visualize what uh, the frame should look like and i you know have a vision and i execute it uh, accordingly uh, but when i'm shooting rituals or weddings i don't uh, i mean i can't always do that so i just go with the flow and see how i can make the most of uh, everything and make uh, sure the images are not directed i never i will never you know stop them and say do that again or something like that so i'll capture the event as in how it happens uh, so yeah so uh, as wedding photographers i think we need to know how to shoot in both ways uh, if you're shooting portraits you would know you would need to you know uh, put in all your technique and ensure that you get a, a beautifully composed lit image uh, and when you're shooting rituals you need to ensure that your images are uh, you know uh, natural and uh, realistic and uh, shows the events as in how it happens okay um, one last question before we close sure uh, i think there's a student who's out of 12th uh, who's asking this i would like to be a travel photographer but i have no idea what to do after this um, what should i take uh, to proceed uh, to become a travel photographer also another person who's personalized the question to you have you studied photography technically uh, ma'am if you permit me yes uh, people uh, i think after your 12th it is will be nice if you join uh, any course that deals with visual communication or visual media which will give you an exposure to basic photography both theoretically and the practical exposure is important and uh, with the basic knowledge i think you have to have your own camera the more number of clicks that you keep on making uh, you know it's about your own way to explore and uh, I, i guess every picture you become a better photographer what do you say ma'am yeah so answering the first question uh about the travel photography part uh let me just tell you that as travel photographers it's not very easy to earn a living it uh, i mean it again depends uh, there are uh, lesser opportunities to make a living out of travel photography or uh, but if that is what you really like and i'm sure you will be able to find uh, uh, opportunities in there as well uh, but it's just that it's you know lesser than in maybe you know maybe in fashion or portraits or lifestyle or weddings uh, so probably what you could do is like a combination of two things uh, keep traveling keep uh, making beautiful images maybe you can sell it to like magazines or you can uh, uh, you can you know publish your own travel blog or uh, you know get more uh clients to like travel with you uh, to these amazing places uh so you can think of a lot of things but uh the opportunities are more in other genres of photography um uh, yeah that's how, just how things are and uh yeah uh yeah i haven't had professional photography training but it definitely would help would speed up the process if you uh, you know study photography uh after your 12th and uh, you know you get a formal structured training somewhere it will definitely help for you to you know uh, speed up your whole career growth so yeah all right thank you so much ma'am for being so patient uh, and answering all those questions indeed all of your pictures were so inspiring so beautiful so wishing you a great career ahead and uh, thank you very very much for joining us on this webinar we look forward to connect to you sometime in future too uh, thank you so very much yeah thank you so much thanks for having me on board i really enjoyed this uh, and uh, hope you have i was able to inspire all the young students to take it out definitely no definitely participants thank you one and all for joining us during the session uh, as mentioned earlier uh, the feedback form will be sent to you through a mail uh, today and uh,